Hi guys, Ronnie here and welcome to the workshop. A couple of months ago I've shown you my Tarmac SL7 build uh, back here with the Campagnolo Super Record EPS group set and I made a video about it at the time, about the first impressions. But now I have gathered a lot of kilometers and hours on it, so I'm ready to bring you some more experiences. Also compounded by the fact that I have the open built up now with Durace Ti2 and I've been riding these uh, two group sets back to back so that's perhaps a more interesting comparison now that I can uh, well compare them directly so let's start uh, with the review okay so uh, the previous video was uh, fairly detailed regarding the installation and compatibility etc so now I just want to focus on uh, the more recent findings that I've made, uh, particularly regarding the um, comparison. So I've said before that the levers on the Campagnolo group set are really, really different compared to anything else. They have this uh, nice curved shape, both um, in the hoods area and the lever blade itself which is very comfortable uh, and very ergonomic particularly the double curvature of the blade makes you uh, well in control in both positions so that's very nice certainly I like it a lot better than the one uh, on the Shimano lever one thing you need to consider is that the diameter of the hood itself is a lot larger than on the Shimano lever so that one is actually pretty small which is good if you have small hands Campagnolo might be problematic for riders uh, with short fingers and small palms so that's one thing to keep in mind uh, the shift logic um, I would say certainly is debatable between the two uh, I'll be honest, when I first got on the Campagnolo, I thought to myself, oh, what the hell this is, what have I done? Uh, string from my good old trusty Shimano, but then uh, when I got used to it, it actually became very intuitive, and it's nice that you have uh, the two shift actions completely separated from each other, whereas on the Shimano, uh, it's not the case, and people have been complaining about this, uh, on many occasions, in many reviews, uh, perhaps SRAM has the best system here because there really is just uh, two levers for everything. And here you have uh, two small buttons on each side uh, in basically the same space. So, uh, yeah, when, when you're not thinking too much, when you're uh, wearing thick gloves, when you have frozen hands in these kind of conditions, um, might not be the best solution so yeah I think Campy has the upper hand here as well uh, regarding the hood cover uh, this is also fairly different uh, from other brands it's very very soft and pliable uh, so that's okay that's comfortable but I think in wet conditions at least for me riding without gloves it's not that grippy um, the Shimano is fairly uh, grippy, even in the wet, same for SRAM, but I had blisters on my, on my palm from those because the rubber is pretty hard, uh, not so much here. Uh, so that's another key difference. Uh, then if you go to the brakes, now I think uh, this is where the biggest difference is, because I would say mm, Regarding everything else, uh, I couldn't really pick out one single best group set uh, in terms of shift performance, etc. But regarding the brakes, I think Campagnolo is a clear winner here mm, in all regards. Uh, really, you get better modulation and you get much more power and basically zero noise. So I first noticed this just now when I got back uh, on the Shimano bike you know I was riding on gravel I grabbed the brakes uh, with one finger like, like I'm used to on the, on the Campy 
and just well nothing really happened even though it's the same rotor size everything is set up perfectly on both and I just felt this uh, quite uh, at, time, at the time quite disconcerting lack of brake power uh, on there and then I went down into drops and there I also felt that it's just not like that you know you don't have that nice beautiful feel and modulation and power on their fingertips um, I, one thing I'd like to point out I also have Shimano brakes on the time trial bike but here that's not an issue because in, with this style of brake lever you get much more much more leverage on there so even though the brake itself is weaker you know you're pulling it with multiple fingers against the bar uh, radially basically so I didn't notice that but but here um, definitely not the case particularly when when in the hoods position here it just feels weak uh, compared to the Campagnolo so uh, that's one thing uh, second thing is noise as I said uh, no noise here even in the wet uh, even in the cold um, even when the brakes are very hot on a long descent nothing really phases uh, these these calipers and rotors uh, the also the pad retraction also a problem with Shimano that after prolonged braking the pads don't want to retract uh, no such thing here so no rub uh, as well also uh, the sandwich construction of the Shimano brakes mm, that's not ideal in terms of longevity and also uh, these rotors are quite prone to warping on the heat and then you get the thinging, thinging noise Mm, also many people complain about that uh, none of those things apply to these rotors however there is one uh, drawback that I found I have uh, two wheel sets with Campy rotors on them so four rotors uh, in total all of them were out of true since new so I had to spend a considerable uh, amount of time just getting them through and that's very important because even though the pad clearance is pretty okay certainly better than SRAM but not as good as a Shimano so having a true rotor on Campy is really really crucial and I had to f uh, work quite a lot just to get there get to that point so that's not ideal it's probably the manufacturing technique thing but I wasn't happy about it for sure um, but then uh, I managed to solve that and since then it's been fl uh, flawless uh, then for the other things uh, already said the installation is pretty difficult on integrated bar setups because uh, you need to cut and you can only cut the hose uh, at the caliper so um, yeah that makes it pretty tricky also the front brake uh, on the super record group set on lesser group sets it's it's all the same but here you get a caliper with no adapter no um, flat mount adapter I mean which uh, is pretty neat and all but you can't really choose uh, shows the rotor size so with this caliper I'm fixed to 160 and I would really really like to have 140 because all the other bikes are on 140s so I can't swap the wheels um, and that's quite inconvenient so what I've decided to do is to order one more rear caliper and now I can just put a standard flat mount uh, adapter on there and switch it to the 140 position and then I can run a 140 rotor you also need to do this uh, if you're installing the group set on a bike with a non-traditional fork mount uh, particularly the so-called um, how do I say this U-turn uh, fork style mount so the open is a prime example but also BMC bikes use this so here the caliper is attached uh, to the fork without any adapter uh, like on the rear fork if you're running 140 uh, rotor size so this caliper 
won't fit on there. So you need to keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a bit of an installation uh, complication. Uh, but on the E-car or the chorus, uh, as far as I know, you get two standard flat mount calipers uh, that use adapters and there's no problem there. So, yeah, to sum up the braking thing, immediately when I hopped on this bike, I noticed that, oof, uh, the braking is not like that. Uh, and not what I would like. And also, off-road, I would really appreciate the higher chunkier lever bodies that I have on campus so uh, that's why I ordered, ordered the arrival or sorry an e-car uh, group set for the open just to try it out and see okay so uh, then regarding the shifting part of the equation um, I would say no real issues there people like to say that Shimano has the best front shifting in the business um, well, in this particular case, I can't compare that because here I'm running Shimano chain rings and they're just pretty damn excellent. And I think this is the main reason why their shifting is so good. It's down to the chain rings because here I have a standard SRAM, your chain rings. And the shifting there is quite sleepy. It's not bad in any way. It didn't get chain drops or uh, problems like that, but it's just not as crisp as here. So I really don't know how it would be uh, with Camp EPS and the company in chain rings. So can't really comment on that. Um, this combination though works excellent. By the way, people ask, these are 11 speed chain rings, of course. Back then, the 12-speed chainings were not a thing. Um, and I built this up and yeah, it's just no issue really. On the front, you don't need to worry about uh, the number of speeds you have as long as it's, well, two chainings or one. Um, so that's that. Uh, rear shifting, uh, very positive, um, extremely quick, violent even. Uh, one thing I've mentioned before in the first video is the overshift function. So when you shift up or down, um, the derailleur actually moves more than it needs to to engage the gear. Uh, that means that for a brief period of time it touches or the chain touches the next sprocket, um, which makes for a very secure shift even on the sprinting etc. But it creates in my mind, a bit of an unnecessary amount of noise. Uh, at first, I found it disturbing and you know, I got used to it, but if there was a way to disable this feature, then I just would, because the shifting is so good anyway, it doesn't matter. Mm, I even have the oversized pulley wheels installed. Uh, I haven't tried the shifting without because I well, installed it st uh, straight away, like it is. So I can't comment uh, if that makes a difference, but it doesn't detract from the uh, shifting performance, doesn't really make it bad in any way. Um, battery life uh, is another thing I wanted to uh, discuss. Well, so far it's been pretty much the same as Shimano. Um, I really like to be preventative in these kind of things, so after a month or so I always charge it because I tend to ride a lot, or I did at least uh, during the season, now I'm in the off season, so yeah, not much training going on for the next week or so. Uh, so I can't give you an exact value because I just still don't want to ride it until I'm stuck. But yeah, nothing out of ordinary there. You also get the magnetic band for the battery, which you can uh, strap around it and then it uh, keeps the whole thing uh, cut from power so there is no accidental discharge, which is I think a pretty neat solution. You can do that with SRAM uh, when you remove the batteries, but you can't do that with Shimano um, because the battery is internal. The only way you have is just disconnecting it, which in most cases means disassembling some part of the bike where it's installed, usually the seat post. Uh, so that's about it. 
no other real uh, compatibility issues here or, or any other thing that would worry me really. Mm. People were asking about the weight. Now weight wise the group sets um, as it stands right now the Shimano is the lightest and then uh, Campy and SRAM are slightly heavier and pretty much on par 150 gram or so uh, or 200 depends on the configuration on top of Shimano. That doesn't really bother me because yeah weight doesn't really matter as much as you would think. Uh, one thing though uh, that you have to keep in mind when I first got the open my plan was to put the campy on it because I just like it um, but I couldn't because of the front mag clearance I've already said in the first video that these components are just huge much bigger than any other um, components so on the front as you can see this is just a 26 mm tire there's not much clearance going on there with the gravel tire that would definitely be a no-go and the rear Mac well one thing I miss uh, from Shimano here even though it looks super cool with all the carbon uh, Shimano have this neat shadow technology going on means that the rear Mac is definitely nice the hidden away underneath the frame uh, not the case here sticking out pretty bad which means in a crash it's a lot more vulnerable probably and also it's not as aerodynamic one other thing that people have ask, been asking about is the chain link and I wasn't sure how this will uh, work myself uh, the thing is uh, for the chains Campagnolo doesn't have a quick link for 12 speed only for 13 speed for e-car and for me that's a problem because I wax my chains um, so what I've done is I just put on a SRAM 12 speed uh, link on there and it works perfectly so far no no issues with it whatsoever I also have some Shimano ones now so I will try those if, if they work because they seem more secure but as I said uh, this worked just fine Another thing that I can't really comment on is the cranks of course because I just stuck with my quark. Uh, people have been saying that it's an eyesore. Well, I use the bike for training and racing. So for me power measurement uh, is key and I have quark on all my bikes. So uh, that's what I have here and I'm not going to change that anytime soon. Unless I get a sponsorship from SRM or something. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much everything um, that I wanted to uh, talk about really. Uh, one more thing regarding the charge port. Uh, it's pretty neat and actually I think uh, again better thought out than Shimano or SRAM. Uh, you have this huge charge box that I'm going to show you in a minute. And if you pop this little flap open, firstly it's completely sealed. so. Yeah, a, a bit different and this connector is actually threaded on so the connector threads on uh, with the wire end and uh, the benefit of this is that it can't just get uh, disconnected uh, so that's pretty neat and I'll show you the charger in a minute yeah so this is what the charger looks like it's pretty huge uh, but it charges the thing pretty quickly it has this dedicated uh, power cable as well so no USB charger necessary and this is the cable I wanted to show you if I can get it in focus yeah that's the way as you can see it's threaded so it will definitely not slip out and it's quite uh, thought out quite nicely because it also has this little uh, hook and loop fastener on there so you can hang it on the bar or somewhere on the bike so it's uh, attached securely so yeah pretty neat solution if you ask me uh, but really that's just a minor detail uh, so uh, to give you a summary of the super record EPS group set um, shifting wise um, I think uh, it's just as good as Shimano, which is a great thing. I would say slightly better than SRAM. And certainly on the front. Uh, 
Then breaking wise, uh, it's I would say head and shoulders on top of everything else uh, I have tried so far. So that's a big plus. Mm. Practicality wise, um, it's a bit different. You need to consider the front brake mount, uh, the rotor compatibility, uh, etc. And uh, the brake hose installation is just a pain in the ass. So if you have an integrated bike, um, it's going to involve a lot of swearing to install this. Uh, the cabling is not too bad uh, in itself. I mean the electric wires. So it's something to consider. Also, as I mentioned before, the battery is a lot bigger than elsewhere. So if your bike doesn't have a dedicated mount for it, then it's not as easy. Uh, for example, uh, if I wanted to install a Campagnolo on my Shift TT, I just can't uh, because of how the wiring uh, works and uh, the battery mounted or sorry, the junction box mounted on the in the seat post uh, doesn't allow that in the TT setup and also they don't have hydraulic TT brakes so it's a no-go which is a shame really because I would like to have uh, identical groove sets on the, on the two bikes and that would be way more practical uh, yeah so Weight wise, if you're a weight weenie, this is probably not the group set for you. Uh, Drivetrain efficiency is good, uh, just fractionally worse than Shimano. Although the aerodynamics might be a little bit worse also marginally because of the sticking out uh, rear rack. Tire clearance, something you need to uh, consider. For road racing bikes, not a big deal. I would say tires up to 30 are okay. Uh, bigger than that, gravel tires, etc. are a no-go with this front Mac. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions regarding Campy Super Record EPS or how does it compare to the other group sets, then leave a comment down below. Uh, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.